In this video, I'll give you an introduction to visualizations using Catman. First, I'll show you the different panels and then introduce the most important visualization objects. I'll especially focus on real-time graphs and post-process graphs, but also briefly on digital displays, FFTs, and others. I'll also briefly explain the interactive objects such as buttons and switches. In the end, there are some tips and tricks for you. Let's take a look at the panels first. On the panels, we can have measured values displayed on the screen during or after a measurement using a wide variety of visualization objects. We distinguish between the simple panel, the scope panel, the floating panel, and the print page. The panels are used most frequently, so a panel is created immediately with each new project. You can create the most important visualization objects directly from a channel. Now the source is already defined and you can decide which visualization object should be created. On a panel you can display visualization elements anywhere and in any size. In the menu bar you will find all visualization objects available in the measuring mode, arranged in functional groups. Of course you can also add the visualization objects from the menu bar. The first channel of the channel table will be automatically assigned as the source. If you assign another visualization object of the same type, the next channel will be used as the signal source. If you want to use a different signal source, simply drag the desired channel onto the object. If there is no more space in the panel, simply create a new panel, and another panel, and another one. Up here we can see which panels we have already created. We can also name these panels and change the font sizes to make the display even clearer. Clicking on an object or a panel displays the properties of the respective object or panel. With the scope panel, the available space on the monitor is automatically adjusted to fit the screen. Up here you can select new objects. Of course you have the possibility to adjust the position and size of the elements on the screen. The operating menu of each visualization element is displayed on the left-hand side. This allows you to easily adjust both the signal sources and the properties of the visualization. Now I'll start a short measurement. If you have several screens at your disposal, the floating panels are a great addition. A floating panel is created as a separate window, which you can drag to another screen. Now maximize the window, and create the desired objects exactly as you would with the scope panel. If you really have many screens with similar display types, you can also duplicate panels. That saves a lot of work. With the print page, you have the possibility to print a document directly from the measuring mode without changing to the analysis mode. However, the possibilities of evaluation and visualization in the analysis mode are considerably greater, so we will not go into this in detail here. Now let's take a look at the most important visualization objects. Here we find all available visualization elements. The first group includes the real-time indicators. These objects can only be used during a measurement. I'll start a measurement so that you can immediately see what the objects can do. The digital indicator should be self-explanatory. Here, therefore, only the special features. Under display, you can define whether the current value, maximum, minimum, peak, mean value, or RMS value is to be displayed. Analog meters visualize signals very clearly. It is sufficient to define the minimum and maximum of the scale. Alarm limits can also be defined. The bar indicators have a very similar range of functions and can also be configured very easily. The multibar graphs provide a good overview of multiple similar signals such as strains and temperatures. Here I'll just turn off auto scaling so that all displays are based on the same range of values. The simple table is ideal for displaying not only the current measured value, but also the minimum and maximum of each. With a few clicks, you can adapt this simple table to your needs.
The real-time graph graphically displays the variation of signals over the past seconds, minutes, or hours of a measurement. Autoscaling is initially active for all axes. This is very helpful because the signal is immediately visible. Please do not be confused by the fidgety display. This is due to the high resolution during AD conversion, which results in minimal signal vibrations being acquired. For instance, when I tap my finger on the force transducer, you can see the module's high resolution. Now we can also adjust the time range so that we can display the past 10 minutes or hours. We can also change the time format on the x-axis. For the time being, we will display force versus time. However, I can also display force versus displacement. To do this, I'll simply drag the displacement channel onto the x-axis. As you can see, the cursor changes as well. If we don't like it, we can display the force versus time again. To do this, I'll simply drag the time channel onto the x-axis. I'll add another force channel. In addition, we would like to add the channels of other measured variables. To do so, we need additional axes. Under axes, I'll first define the number of axes required. Then I can drag the channel to the new axis range. Or you can simply drag the channel into the graphic and subsequently create a new y axis for this channel. However, sometimes it is clearer to choose fixed scaling. Please note that in the upper part of this menu, general settings are made, while in the lower part you can configure the individual axes. There are many other settings here that enable you to adjust the axis titles, colors, and ticks. You can also access the settings of the respective axis by clicking on the axis. Once you have completed scaling, you can also overlay axes. Let's now take a look at the post-process graph. I'll create it from the Force A channel. While the real-time displays can only be used during the measurement, the post-process graph can be used in both the A and during the measurement. The post-process graph enables you to easily display millions of measured values. Since this may put too much strain on your computer, you can scale the update of the graph. As you can see, I have also adapted my layout to this object and saved it as a template. Now we can take a closer look at events during the measurement. The horizontal zoom allows you to quickly get to the interesting events of your measurement. Here you can see my tip with the finger. If you adjust the properties of the curves, you can also view the measurement points in the graph. The sample rate is enough for this event. This event could not be recorded sufficiently with the selected sample rate. The sample rate should be adjusted, but we will not do that now. I'll now add the other channels to this graphic as well. I'll have force B represented with force A. This time, I'll immediately change to four axes. The displacement is assigned to axis 2, and the temperature to axis 3. During data acquisition, the status of digital signals must sometimes also be displayed. Here, we use the digital channels of an MX879B. I'll display the first three digital signals together on the y-axis 4. As these signals only have the states 0 and 1, the signals are now superimposed. Therefore, I'll now shift the curves of some signals. These settings are also carried out under Setup Curves. The curves can easily be moved in the x or y direction. I'll move the curves in direction y. Now, all signals are clearly displayed. You can also use the cursor to determine the time difference between signals or the maximum of a signal during the measurement. Of course, you can creatively adapt the style and layout of the graph to your needs with a variety of options. If we like the graph, we can create a template from it. Then every new graph will look exactly the same. You can also easily reset to default. This also works with all other visualization objects. As an alternative to creating a template, you can also save the graphic object and reload it in another project or make this graph available to your colleagues.
If you want to create an interim report or mail already during the measurement, you can simply copy the graph to the clipboard or save it as a file. Simply use Export, Print. As already shown in the real-time graph, you can, of course, also use this graph to display force versus displacement or torque versus rotation angle, etc. The frequency analysis combines an analysis tool with visualization. The graphic uses the first signal source. I replace this signal source with a sign signal from a frequency generator. Go to General to adjust the FFT. You can also display the peaks immediately. For this purpose, please set the threshold appropriately. With the spectrogram, we can display such frequency signals versus time. Using the object is very similar. Here too, I'll use my sinus signal. Now I'll change the frequencies once so that you can observe the reaction on the two objects. If you want to display the current GPS position, add a map. Catman immediately offers to use the active GPS signals, so channel assignment is done in no time. If you do not have access to the internet during the measurement, you can use an offline map. To do so, simply save a suitable map section while you are in the office with internet access. You can then use this map section later without access to the internet. Now I'll briefly address the interactive objects. With Catman and the MX879B, you also have the possibility to influence your test bench with digital or analog signals. An on-off switch can be used to directly control the digital outputs of an MX879B to switch a pump on or off. Sliders allow direct access to the analog outputs of an MX878B or 879B. If I want to control the speed of a pump with 0 to 10 volts in the speed range of 0 to 1000 revolutions per minute, I have to store a factor of 0 0.01. The button provides a whole range of functions that you can configure with one click. Simply assign an action to the button. The predefined actions already offer a wide range of possibilities. Start the DAC job. Switch to analysis mode. I just want to terminate the current DAC job. Many other actions are already prepared for you. If you create your own programs with EasyScript, you can start a specific subprogram with one click. You can also use clone of to call a specific catman function or access one of the add-ins. I'll simply stop the measurement using this button. Please note that the interactive elements such as buttons, on-off switches, and sliders are only active in execution mode. In execution mode, you can no longer modify the position or size. Now I could turn on a pump and set the speed of the pump. Now I'll terminate the measurement with my button. You cannot modify the position, size, and properties of the visualization object while you are in execution mode. To do this, switch back to design mode. And now, as promised, some tips and tricks. You cannot measure all events. You can add such events as comments, hearing noise in the gearbox, leakage at the pump. All these comments are added to the measurement with a timestamp. If the menu bar is disturbing or not necessary, you can also switch to full screen mode. Then you have more space available on the screen. If you work with the same DAC project on different computers or screens, the resolution may not be suitable for your visualization. Here you can reduce or enlarge your panel. You have seen that I constantly switched between the object properties and measurement channels windows when configuring the visualization objects. In my case, both windows are arranged on top of each other. Of course, you can also arrange the windows differently. Now, I'll put the visualizations on top of each other again. You can also use the pen to flip display windows to the side and show them again if necessary. If a window has disappeared, you can activate it again here. Here, you can also view the system status so that you are informed about the system. The most important information about the current measurement can also be found in the lower part of the screen. Under Help, you will find the Knowledge Base and other tips and tricks about Catman. As you can see, visualization during the measurement is very easy and convenient. 
Professional trainings are available at our HBK Academy for beginners and advanced. Of course, also for Catman. If you have any questions or suggestions, please do not hesitate to contact us. See you next time.